England beat Australia 1-0 on Friday night. What's your overall assessment of the game? Ollie Watkins getting the only goal. Yeah, I just thought there was people saying, oh, you know, it's disjointed and nobody really put that. I think they did. And basically, Sam, it was a, a team of trialists, wasn't it? I mean, at the highest level. It was a second tier yeah, England yeah. team. When you it? used to get the probables against the possibles, wasn't it? This was the possibles and maybes just in case Gareth Southgate someone get injured or he's looking to see if they can handle the pressure, obviously playing at Wembley. I thought Ollie Watkins was very good because his goal epitomised how his game has changed and developed under Unai Emery at Aston Villa because in the past he runs the channels but he did it he ran the channels brilliantly for England as well he had the chance which was a brilliant ball from James Madison wasn't it where he gets in behind he wants to stretch and always gets in behind that's the one where he hits the post yeah and really yeah. he could go on the inside of the goalkeeper but he goes on the outside and he narrows angle down so a couple of times before that he'd just gone a little bit too early and he was flagged offside as a result of it but I think that also just put it in the minds of the, the linesman as well so he, he was he was just on the edge wasn't he and he just got in the perfect time that was a lovely ball from Madison that was a good move actually because it started with the goalkeeper yeah and he had the chance where it was ripped across the six yards box he got deflection at the near post and he went between his legs didn't it yep. and you think oh you've missed a big chance there that it then when you see slightly deflection on yeah, the way through it, though, so, wasn't there but I think that's it how he's developed and I said he runs the channels brilliantly it's a bit like remember when Calvert Lewin improved under Duncan Ferguson and Carlo Ancelotti where they said look you're doing too much work yeah. in the channels keep yourself in the 18 yard box and his interview was really good afterwards where he actually said he believed that he belongs in the England squad and he's good enough to be in the England squad. Whereas before, when he, he sort of was a bit in awe, wasn't he? He thought, oh, should I really be here? He had a bit of imposter syndrome. Yeah. Well, that's gone completely. I thought Lewis Dunk played really well in what was obviously a, a makeshift shift, shift back a four. Makeshift. It's easy for me to say. Sure yeah, got that. So don't have to dumb that, Ollie. We'll be all right, yeah, 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 make sure um, the F was in there. And he had the uh, one that he cleared off the line, didn't he, from uh, Ryan Strain, where... We got caught on the counter attack again. It was a bit disjointed, but he's um, that was natural. The end, wasn't it? Yeah, that, his natural instincts just like come into him where he thought, right, I've got to get back and defend my goal line. Basically, I thought Jared Bowen looked all right in in spurts when he actually got the ball. He looked positive yeah, it was on the but, periphery of it. I think. Yeah, but he didn't get enough service yeah. because it was so disjointed. You looked at him and he's probably thinking, I need more of the ball. But he always looks to be fair to. Jared Bowen, he always looks to take on the fullback. He always looks to go on the outside or he plays little one twos, little give goes. The ball we put through, so Conor Gallagher was really good. Um, that was a question I asked just a moment ago whether or not you thought that the narrative was right, because the results suggest that since the start of the World Cup, they've played 12, won nine, drawn two, and lost one. Games where you could argue that that is the case, they've struggled to break down a low block. You could say Ukraine, because they drew that game and they drew against uh, the USA as well. I think you have to write off that Nations League experience four games in 12 days. It was absolute carnage really at the end of a, a, a long season. So I think you've got to sort of look back a little bit further than that. They always seem to score goals. They, they rarely draw a blank. So so is it to do with people? Uh, is people's thoughts about the game down to entertainment? They want more entertainment out of an English well, Don't you think as well it's a little bit as well that you could put that to Gareth Southgate that because he's quite cautious by nature and he doesn't make substitutions uh, quick enough, which we've seen, obviously, in, in the um, final against uh, he made Italy. four on the hour mark on Friday. On Friday, night. yeah. But I'm sorry, normally in the big games where you sit against France, he didn't make... Uh, when you say you got the finishers when we were on top, and he will say that if Harry Kane scores a penalty, we go through. But I think with the attacking uh, talent we have at our disposal, maybe he should be a bit more proactive. But I'm just looking at... When you say you can't break down teams who sit defensively and just, you know defend the 18 yard line right? and, I, and I'm saying they actually end up doing that and right. in every game that they play yeah it might not be pretty because that's the, a truth of football that the fact is is that a lot of teams that are difficult to play against instead of a low block are difficult to break down because that's by very nature is what they are well, try, trying to achieve you know, the thing is yeah, but you've got bodies but, sometimes but in the end they usually do it don't because they because what you have to do is you have to wear them down you have to wear them down with your passing and your movement that you hope that somebody loses concentration because normally you could have five in a line across the 18 yard box couldn't you with mm. four midfield, midfield, midfield players in front then you have to be patient and break them down as long as you're brave and you've got players that can uh, engage people 1v1 I'm just looking at the, the team that you could have as your 10 you could have Foden as your 10 couldn't you you could have obviously Madison as your 10 Grealish can go in there and play as your 10 we're looking at Trent Alexander-Arnold or I thought his switches of play on Friday night were absolutely outstanding yeah. you know when you well, think he set, helped set up the goal didn't he yeah well what he's done is because it comes out to him he just thinks they're going to be pushing out to the 18 yard box which they were the Australian um, back four back five then he think I'm going to whip it into an area and that's all he did that's like football intelligence where he whips it into area Jack Reddish gets it 
he obviously crosses it and Ollie Watkins apologises. You think, no, it was going wide, Ollie, anyway. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're centre forward, that's what you're supposed to do. But if you look at other options where you can break teams down, where you can have John Stones going. If I actually think that Gail Southgate could play Declan Rice if he wants to play the like two against the better teams mm. and Jude Bellingham next to him with him with the licence to actually break forward and then go and make that extra body, then you either have Trent Alexander-Arnold coming into that midfield area or John Stones coming in. From the so, right fullback position. Exactly. So then you get the extra an body. extra forward. You get an extra forward or extra midfield player further up the pitch. Further up the pitch. 